So it looks like Michael B. Jordan still feels bitter about how his relationship with Lori Harvey ended because he is out here spilling some spicy Harvey family tea and talking about how Marjorie has been manipulating everyone in the family. He's also bringing receipts. So y'all better get your teacups ready cause this tea is piping hot. Y'all know how I said that Steve Harvey's family is in shambles? Yeah, well things just got even wilder because Michael B. Jordan is now speaking on the messy situation in the family. Family. And well, it looks like Marjorie wears the pants in the family and controls every single person, including Steve himself. I mean, is anyone even surprised? So in case you somehow forgot it, but Michael B. Jordan used to date Marjorie's daughter, Lori, but the relationship ended last year. And even though neither of them spoke publicly about the breakup, it was clear that it was low key messy because they both kept throwing jabs at each other online. Lori posted this picture that said, dump him and Michael shaded her on Saturday Night Live when he threw a mega shade at her. Presenting your musical guest for the evening, Drake and 21 Savage. Performing a song off of one of the most relatable albums of all time her loss. But things took a different turn when Lori's parents started including themselves in the breakup drama with Steve tweeting, love yourself my G. Marjorie also shaded him by posting this video. You sit in shit too long, it stops smelling. So come the fuck out of there. At the time, there was some talk about how Michael B. Jordan didn't feel comfortable in the relationship because of Marjorie's influence on Lori and pretty much everyone in the family. It's obvious that she runs things in a family and she also kind of turned Steve against Michael B. Jordan because Steve was open about his admiration for Michael B. Jordan before he started dating Lori. This guy is such a good guy, man. He is one of the nicest guys, man. I met his father. You know, I've set up with him, we've talked for hours. I just can't find nothing wrong with him. I Steve spoke highly of Michael in that interview and even admitted that he had tried his best to hate him, but couldn't find anything to hate about him. He also met his parents, so from that, we can conclude that he knew Michael personally and liked him a lot. So it only made sense that he would like that his daughter, who is clearly his favorite child, would date a guy like that, right? Well, wrong. From the moment Michael and Lori started dating, it was clear that Steve was not in support of the relationship. For example, in an interview on The Ellen Show, Ellen showed a picture of Lori sitting in MBJ's lap and Steve expressed his discomfort. I've never seen that picture before. <laughs> Very uncomfortable with that picture right there. I'm not... Then there's the time he was asked if he would support Lori and MBJ if they decided to get married and he had this weird reaction. Lori and Michael have been dating for over a year now. If he were to ask to marry her, would you approve? I would have to say so far, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, I don't, man. This was hella weird because for one, Lori has been linked with some very questionable men in the past, like Future, who is the poster child of toxic men. She was also linked to Diddy, who has been accused of being on the DL for as long as Lori has been alive. And let's not forget, she was also linked to Diddy's son, Justin. But somehow, it's MBJ that he disapproves of? I mean, he was the most eligible guy she had dated, even though he really liked Michael B. Jordan from the start? Yeah, the math ain't mathin' for me, and it looks like Marjorie might have had something to do with that because she was way too happy to talk bad about Michael B. Jordan. After the relationship ended, it was kind of obvious that Marjorie was overly involved in the way that things went because her BFF, Lisa Ray, revealed what happened and threw mega shade at MBJ on her podcast, Cocktails with Queens. I think that's bullshit that they said that she wasn't ready because when a person, when a woman finds a good one, then that's what you're looking for. I think the established relationship that Michael did have before this one, I think that maybe that social media that all of that was a lot for him. And I think that he, you know, I heard, I will say this, I heard about his ex and him was so serious that he may have missed her. Oh, wow. Um, I understand Lori venting to her mom about MBJ probably did her dirty, 
But why on earth was Marjorie running her mouth about her daughter's private business? It's hella weird and there is no reason her bestie should feel comfortable publicly discussing Lori's breakup when Lori herself never directly addressed it publicly. It's just disrespectful and once again, it shows how little Marjorie respects other people. And honestly, I don't think we should be too surprised about how controlling Marjorie is because she has a really colorful past. I mean, this woman has been in some interesting situations that she could have only escaped with some extreme manipulation skills because child my girl Marjorie was half a step away from a federal case with the FBI. It also speaks of her PR skills that she has mostly been able to keep this part of her life away from the media. I'm not sure if y'all knew this but Steve is actually Marjorie's third husband but even though they didn't start dating until 2005 they actually met for the first time way back in 1987 and it was love at first sight for Steve but Marjorie couldn't care less about him because he was broke back then and she was not about that broke lifestyle and wanted a man who already had his bag secured so she did not give in to Steve's advances and she ended up marrying two different men before she and Steve reconnected in 2005. While that might not be a big deal her first and second husbands were cousins and if that's not wild then I don't know what is. I guess she was trying to keep it in the family or something but it gets even wilder than this. So her first husband's name was Jim Townsend and he used to be a big time drug lord. I'm talking about the type of drugs that you don't want people to know you have nose candy stuff like that anywho he and marjorie had a child together and she was pregnant with her second child when he got busted by the feds in 1992 when he was trying to score 40 kilos or 88 pounds of nose candy at the time both the fbi and dea were suspicious of marjorie and did not buy her claims that she was not involved in her husband's business even though she was heavily pregnant at the time, they still believed that she was involved in the day-to-day -day running of the business. But then Jim allegedly decided to take the fall for her because she was pregnant and so he cut a deal with the authorities to leave Marjorie out of it and he ended up getting sentenced to life imprisonment. Well, Marjorie was super grateful to him for five years. After five years, her gratitude ran out and she ended up divorcing him while he was still in prison. It didn't take her a long time to find herself a new man, Donnell Woods, who allegedly was Jim's cousin. As if marrying two cousins is crazy enough, Donnell was also a drug dealer and it kind of seems like Marjorie was only after the money because it's just insane that she got with another dealer after barely escaping being charged by the FBI and DEA. Anywho, her second husband also ended up getting busted and again, Marjorie was under suspicion by the FBI and DEA and honestly, I don't blame them. I mean, if someone got investigated for being married to a dealer and then immediately jumped into another marriage with another drug dealer I would be hella suspicious as well but Marjorie made use of her manipulation skills and she got off without any charges honestly I don't think people give Marjorie enough credit for her manipulation skills because it's just crazy that she managed to escape not once but twice and then got married to a millionaire comedian who had been in love with her for 18 years and also made him officially adopt all three of her kids and give them his last name so that they wouldn't be linked to their biological fathers and the shady businesses they were involved in not just that but Steve Steve started paying more attention to her own kids and less attention to his own biological kids. With the way he parades Lori about, you think he was there when she was born and even cut the cord as a proud dad, but nope. He doesn't even talk about his four biological kids as much as Lori and according to sources, Michael B. Jordan is not surprised that conflict grew between all the kids. For those who don't know about that, an insider spilled the tea that Steve did the right thing, adopted Marjorie's kids and loves them like his own, but there's a lot of dissension among the blended heart Harvey clan. There has unfortunately been some jealousy lingering amongst the siblings over Lori, who's the most famous of all Steve's kids, taking over the spotlight with her high profile love life. And now sources are saying Michael feels relieved that he is out of that family for good, and he also believes that Marjorie's manipulation is tearing the family apart. I truly believe Michael got out of the relationship because of Lori's parents' ways. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Marjorie runs the show. Steve is going to sign off on whatever Marjorie says or thinks about MB. I mean, that's not even his real daughter. And everybody hyped about Lori Harvey not realizing who her mama is. That lady married two kingpins that were brothers and currently married to Steve Harvey. Marjorie Harvey for sure taught Lori the game. But do you guys believe that Marjorie is really running the show? Or do you think that MBJ is being a bitter ex? Let me know what your opinions are. And if you think this is messy, just wait until you see the tea I spilled in the next video.